today on Fixing the Money Thing. Remember, it's all about faith. With most families burdened in unsustainable levels of personal debt, most Americans believe there is no way to have financial freedom. However, author, pastor, and financial expert Gary Cassie believes most families can be completely out of debt in less than seven years. You must get out of debt. You've got to make right choices with your money right now. Gary and his wife Drenda are now on a crusade to share this information that changed their life so that you can not just survive, but prosper in today's economy. Your life can be totally transformed by an idea in the marketplace. This is Gary Cassie, Fixing the Money Thing. Welcome to another special edition of Fixing the Money Thing. We're Gary and Drinda Cassie, and we are glad you're with us. Yes, we are. We're going to be talking about the kingdom, the kingdom of God works every time. Every time. What do you mean by every time, Gary? Well, is that is every time, every time? Every time's every time. Every time, every time. If I drop this Bible, it's going to drop how often? Every time. Well, that's what I discovered in the kingdom of God through hunting years ago when we were broke. I began to see the kingdom of God operate. The stories you're about to hear, you won't believe. I would not believe them unless I actually saw them. They are so amazing. I'm an eyewitness. (laughs) Eyewitnesses. But the kingdom works so specifically that you're going to be amazed today on Fixing the Money Thing. So stay tuned. Let's take a look at this. I love these woods. So many great things have happened in these woods. You have to go back to the Word of God and anchor, re-anchor yourself on the promises of God, the foundation of faith, the peace that passes understanding. We learned it, deer hunting. It's all about faith. I, I like to deer hunt. I don't know if anyone likes to hunt here, but I like to deer hunt in Ohio. Like here, it's, whole, it's cold, and I'd go out and freeze and pay all the equ- you know, equipment and licensing and not, any, not get anything. You know, just score zero. And, uh, you know, my wife and I asked the Lord to teach us about the kingdom. And so he said to me, why don't you, why don't you trust me for the deer this year? I said, what does that mean? <laughs> how's, how's that work? Are you going to tie one up for me or something or what? I didn't know. And he said, no, I want you to take a, a seed, a financial seed. I want you to sow and I want you to name that for your deer and believe that you receive when you pray. Mark eleven twenty four. So I did that and uh, went down to a farm that year that I hadn't been to before. And the, the guy there said, well, just go out, sit out in the pasture. There's a tree. And down, the, down this pasture, there was one big tree. And, you know, a pasture is, you know, plain. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing around. And there's one tree out there, a big tree. He says, go sit next to that tree. He said, you know, there's a few deer around here. And so I went and sat down. And in 30 minutes, this buck come up across the field behind the tree. I was sitting on one side of the tree and he come up other side of the tree. He didn't see me sitting in the middle of this pasture. You know, it's just grass everywhere. And so he come up to that tree and started looking around that tree. He come around there and he saw me sitting right there and he snorted and took off at a dead run. And, and uh, I dropped that buck and in 30 minutes had my deer. Well, what happened was, and the Lord spoke that to me about that deer. I took a piece of paper out and I said, well, father, I believe that I received this deer in the name of Jesus. And I stuck it in my pocket. And my friend heard that shot. He come over and goes, man, that's a nice deer. I said, Don, I said, there's something, something about this deer. I said, I pulled that piece of paper. I said, there's something about this. I said, you know, I've, hunted, I've been hunting for years and not getting these deer. And I said, 30 minutes had this one. And I said, God spoke to me. And I think some, this is something about the kingdom. I think God had something to do with this one. Well, I began to repeat that. And uh, every year, get my deer in 30 to 40 minutes. And that's going on 20 some years now. And even to the place where I can even name what kind of deer I get. And uh, I don't have time to teach all that. I have a book called Faith Hunt that God taught me how the kingdom operates. But he'll use anything to teach you the kingdom. He just wants you to get it. I was uh, invited to speak at a a Promise Keepers event up in Montana two years ago. And uh, so I go up and speak, you know, and uh, spoke on Saturday. And they go, now Monday, we're going to take you out hunting. I said, that's fine. They said, said, we're going to watch the Faith Hunt in operation. I said, what do you mean? Oh, we're all, we're all, we, all, we brought you up here to Montana to watch this thing operate. Just like in your book. We're going to take you out there antelope hunting and we're going we're to see how the thing operates. My son said, Dad, aren't you nervous? I mean, they're all watching you to see how this thing works like, like you say it works. I said, well, Tim, I said, I just believe God for that antelope. You know, I've never been hunting antelope. Antelope's the 
second fastest animal on North, in the, I guess in the world. A cheetah is the only thing faster, you know. So we're out there. And uh, about 30 minutes out there in Montana, we sneak over a little rise, and there's a herd of antelope, you know. And so I uh, commenced a shooting. I shot four times and missed, emptied my rifle, you know, grabbed my son's rifle. And now the herd took off, you know, about 60 mile an hour. They're running, except one buck just stood still. And uh, just missing him, he's going, come on, try again, try again, you know, just... <laughs> Ran, my, my rifle's empty. I said, son, give me, my, give me your rifle. I took his rifle and I dropped it, you know. And now behind me is this crowd of guys that brought me up there. They're all there and they're, you know, they're all there and the cell phone's all, it's just like in the Faith Hunt book. It's unbelievable. That buck, that buck stood still. That buck, it, it was just amazing to watch it. And they're, you know, they're all going. Now they've invited me back up again to, to Faith Hunt you know, for go elk hunting next year, you know. We just got back from Australia and uh, we spoke down there and the guy said, hey, you know, you got some time this morning. You guys, you, got, you want to go out crab fishing? I said, I don't know anything about crab fishing, but it sounds good to me. So we go out and he says, we're going to eat them tonight. So I figured we'd eat about 15 to 20 crab, you know, to feed a group of people. And so I said, well, I'll get 15, you know, we throw these pots out there. And I said, I bless these in the name of Jesus. We had two little boats putting these pots out. Dren is in one of them. And uh, she said, well, I'm believing God for an, ex, you know, expectant uh, uh, big, exceeding great return on this. And so, you know, we caught eight, 18 mud crabs. Now, I don't know if you've been, in Australia, mud crab is about 50 bucks for one of them if you go into the restaurant. And I didn't know that they're that big a deal, you know. But this guy, we got 18 of them, and he calls his dad on the, on the phone. And the Bluetooth with the radio, you can hear the whole conversation. And uh, he calls his dad, well, did, did you catch any crab? He says, Dad, we got 18. And his dad went nuts. He goes, oh, my, praise God. You've got to be, oh, God is good. And he's going on. You know, he's just going, praise God. I'm thinking, what's the deal with the mud crab? I mean, he, they're acting like this is, you know. and, and then Matt, the guy that took us out, he goes, I only catch three. And he says, man, I was stretching my faith. He says, I, I was stretching my faith for six. I was, I was believing God for six, possibly six. And we got 18. He said, I've never even heard of that before. They esteemed these things so much that we ate crab. We had some left over. The next day, his iPad, he had set on top of his car, and it fell off at the foot of his driveway, and some guy saw it, brought the iPad back up to the house the next morning, and Matt said, started talking about this crab. And he goes, we got some left over. You want some? And the guy says, well, no, you don't have to do that. No, no, I wouldn't take your crab. I mean, this is how precious it is to those guys to take last night's meal, crab, take it. The guy says, man, thank He gave him the crab meat. The guy was thankful for it. I mean, that's how they esteem these things. Now, my question to you is this. That was an amazing catch. And I want to read a scripture to you out of Luke chapter 7. John the Baptist, verse 18. John's disciples told, told about all these things Jesus was doing. John was told about all the things. And so, John sent some disciples of his disciples down to, to Jesus and asked this question, are you the one who was to come or should we expect someone else? At that very time, Jesus cured many who had diseases, sicknesses, evil spirits, gave sight to many who were blind. So he replied to the messengers, go back and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Let me ask you a question. Isn't it interesting? Jesus did not say, go back and tell them John 3, 16 or whatever, you know, Old Testament scripture. You know that Jesus knew the scriptures, right? What was he talking about? The stories. You go back and tell John the stories. You see, the good news of the gospel, what people want to hear are the stories. You see, it's not, Jesus didn't quote, you go back and tell John this scripture and this scripture and this scripture. He said, you go back and tell John, this is what you've seen happen. This is the stories. You know what crab, uh, you, know, me, you know what Matt's talking about today? He's telling everybody about that, that crab catch. You know, that's what, you know, that's what he's telling everybody about. And see, then people go, what now? You know, people have this weird religious idea that witnessing to people is putting John 3, 16 on your bumper. <laughs> Religion has no appeal to people. But if you began to tell them, listen, I got to tell you, my wife, our house, let me tell you how we got our house paid off. Let me tell you about that. On the front cover of my Faith Hunt book is a 27-point buck, 240 pounds, that I won't tell the story on how we got that big buck. But you know what people like to talk? Let me talk, let me talk about that buck I got. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you how this happened. Let me tell you how this happened. See, that's what the good news is. People want to hear the good news of the kingdom. They want to hear good news of the kingdom. 
the stories of the kingdom. You know, Gary's kind of a mild-mannered person, <laughs> but the, the most excited I have ever seen him, uh, a story in his book, uh, Faith Hunt, called The Ice Pond Deer, and uh, he came in from this impossible hunt and thought, kind of dejected, thinking he didn't get the deer, and he comes across an ice pond, and there stands a deer. They faced off, but when he came in, he was literally jumping up and, and down, Frozen. I mean, his beard. It was 50 everything. below. It was like it was, 30. <laughs> it was 30 something below with 50 mile an hour wind gusts. So and it he was thought, oh, really I, cold. I can't hunt in this weather. It's too bad. Yeah. So he headed back to the house. But on the way, the deer was on an ice pond, and I've never seen uh, you an jump up story. and down and yell. It's an amazing. And share. I like, mean, it was so ex so excited. <laughs> I always was so excited, not about getting the deer, but about how it came to pass. The kingdom is just so amazing, and that's why you've got to get the material. And let's talk about how to do that right now. Today, from Fixing the Money Thing, just in time for holiday gift giving, a two-part offer of resources sure to increase your faith through kingdom principles and help you fix your money thing. For many years, Gary's love for hunting earned him nothing but frustration and disappointment until he discovered the principles of faith that changed his life forever. The Lord said, why don't you trust me for your deer this year? You'll enjoy Gary's hunting stories and the principles of faith he's learned that have given him 100% success in the hunt since applying these truths from God's Word. I don't hunt for deer. I receive them. For the hunter and non-hunter alike, Faith Hunt reveals the principles of faith you need to apply. I always say that one experience with the kingdom of God will change your life forever. With your $19 gift, along with the Faith Hunt book, You'll also receive a Faith Works Every Time magnet. When you follow God's kingdom laws, faith works every time. Call, write, or go to GaryCasey.com to order. The second part of today's offer is Gary Cassie's most powerful faith teaching to date. For $39 or more, you'll get the book, The Magnet, and Fixing Your Faith, a powerful series of teachings designed to help you get the answers you need. The Bible works just like it says it will. Why won't it work for me? What is disappointed faith? Do I have it? What tricks can get me off course? Do I know how to fight back? Seven CDs on faith that will change your future. Messages include, what are you doing out here? The importance of faith. Get the picture. What do you believe? Take the 30-day challenge. Freaked out, faded. Call 888-391-LIFE, write, or log on to GaryCasey.com. These great resources are yours when you support Faith Life Ministries. $19 for Faith Hunt and the Faith Works Every Time Magnet. And add the Fixing Your Faith series for only $39 or more today. Call 888-391-LIFE. That's 888-391-5433. Go to GaryCasey.com or write to Faith Life Now. P.O. Box 779, New Albany, Ohio, 43054. Gary Cassie is America's financial coach, and his resources can help make fixing your money thing easy. Call, write, or log on today. Right behind me is a, a big tree that uh, we used to hunt out of when I first moved back here to Ohio and had some memories there as well. Uh, but I just wanted to let you know, the stories you've been hearing I know are amazing, but the stories you're about to hear are even more amazing. So stay with us. I talked last night about how God taught me how faith worked through deer hunting. You know, I told you how I hunted and didn't get anything. I, you know, sat there freezing all the time. And God said, trust me for your deer. And so I began to, uh, you know, he said, I want you to release your faith. I want you to take some money, release it, and release it for that deer and call it done according to Mark 11, 24. And, that was a new concept to me, and I did, and I got my deer in 30 minutes and done that for 28 years, without exception. And I told you that I began to, to you know, be more specific with the deer and the, the size, and without exception, I, I never saw the deer come to me that wasn't the one I had released my faith for. And I said, I'm a spiritual scientist. I never read that in a book, but God began to show me how faith operated, and I was like shocked, but I saw the effect of it, and I began to... So anyway, one day I had sown my seed for a yearling, we, you know, I eat, we eat the venison. Our family was needing the money. We eat the venison, so a yearling is a good deed. So I sowed my seed. I, I released my faith with my wife for a yearling deer. So I went out, and sure enough, there was the yearling, but it was across the woods. 
and it didn't come to me. Now, I, I said this before. I said, if something doesn't look right, if it doesn't happen like the Bible says, what are you supposed to do? Change your theology? No, you're going to ask the Holy Spirit where the short circuit is, right? Where the short circuit is, because what's in the Bible is supposed to happen. All right, so I began to pray in the Spirit. I was up in a tree stand bow hunting, I began to, and the Lord said, well, you didn't confess over it. I said, what are you talking about? He said, do you remember when you released that? You were in your office, and you just, like, paid a bill with it. Like, you just wrote this check out like you're paying a bill, and you just stuck it in the mail, and that was it. I said, yeah. He said, you didn't speak over it. I said, no, I didn't know I was supposed to. He said, well, all the other years you did. You remember you held it in your hand. You said, well, I believe I receive in the name of Jesus. And you named it and you claimed it with your wife. And you, you of course, yeah, I believe it's done. Yeah, I remember that. He said, did you do it? This? I said, no, I didn't. He said, that's why that deer didn't come in. He said, now, that's what he told me. He said, do you remember back there with the, the fish and the loaves? That's why Jesus did that, he said. He said, he was bringing it under the dominion of the government of God. That's why he said, you know, it's why he didn't say, oh, you have five loaves and two fish, begin to pass it out. Nothing would have happened. That's why he said, oh, bring it to me first. And he spoke over it and gave it back. I said, oh, now I'm a spiritual scientist. I want to experiment. I have a hypothesis. I want to check it out, right? So that day I went to my office, got my checkbook out, laid my hand on that check. I said, okay, in the name of Jesus, I believe that I received that yearling. My wife agreed with me. And so I went out and sure enough, in 20 minutes, here comes the yearling right under my tree. And I, I, I unfortunately wounded, just nicked it. He got away. Oh, there's more deer out there. So I did it again. Sure enough, here comes, the, here comes the deer. I was out, you know, you bow hunt, you bow hunt early in the morning. It's still dark outside. So I'm at my tree. Here comes this deer by itself, and it begins to circle my tree stand. It just circles it for 20 minutes. I said, that's the craziest thing I've ever seen. That deer just keeps circling my tree till it got light, and it's still circling my tree. And you know what kind of deer it was? A yearling. And I took that one home. Now, Tim, right down here, he learned how to hunt that way, but he'd been out all three times that I'd been out, and he hadn't got one, which is not supposed to happen. See, I don't hunt deer. What do I do? See, you don't hunt money. You create it. You create wealth. Poverty mindset looks for handouts. We create wealth, ideas. We're the head, not the tail. That's where the ideas are at. We create. Okay. So he says... He came over, I had that deer down, and he's out hunting that night. He comes over and says, Dad, I don't understand. Something's wrong. Yes, sir, that's right. We hunt deer by receiving deer. We hunt them by faith. And that uh, first time out, he should have had one. So he said, what did I do wrong? I said, well, I'll tell you what God just taught me. He said, remember that day you came in the office and you were sowing your seed and believing God for that, that deer you were, you were sowing for? You didn't, you didn't speak over it. You just gave it to me as your pastor. You said, here's for my deer, and you just went on. I said, the Lord just taught me not to do that. And he's all excited. That night we were coming into Columbus, driving by our church. Dad, stop the car. I've got to sow my seed. I've, I know what I did wrong. I want, to, I want to go hunt tomorrow morning. So we stopped. He wrote, his, he wrote his check out in an envelope. And on the envelope, he wrote, for my six-point buck. I thought, well, that's pretty specific, Tim. So he goes out the next morning. Same thing happened to him. In the dark, he's bow hunting. One deer, a buck, comes up and circles his tree, circles his tree, circles his tree. Guess what kind of deer it was? Yeah, you got it. You say, now, pastor, is that how it works? Listen, the kingdom works with very, very specific laws. I'm always amazed how specific they are. Specific. The kingdom is specific. Laws are specific. One time really caught me. It's amazing how specific it is. You know, I talk about my deer hunting. I'd released my faith this year for a buck and a button buck. Button buck's a yearling. So I went out, in 15 minutes, I had my buck. Just like it's supposed to happen, by faith, there he is, shows up. The next day I went out, it was a couple days later, I guess, maybe a week later I went out, and my first buck I had was an eight point. That means it has four points on each side. This next time I went out, here comes a buck, 300 yards away in the field. I see him coming right towards my tree through this big pasture. He comes up and he stands directly under my tree for about 20 seconds. He turns around and runs directly back where he came from, exactly the same trail, 300 yards away. That was the first time a deer had ever come under my tree that was not the specific deer I asked for. I said, Lord, that, I said, because in Ohio, you can't shoot two bucks. You can shoot yearling bucks, it's just a long story, but you can't shoot two bucks. So I couldn't get him, because he's an eight point. My first one was an eight point, it was identical. Got the eight point in 15 minutes, and here comes another eight point I can't get. 
I, so I'm, I'm confused. I said, no, wait a minute, Lord, that's not how it's supposed to happen. It's not how it's happened for years. And I began to pray in the Spirit. And the Lord says, look at your seed. I said, what are you talking about? Look at my seed. I know what I sowed. I know what I believe for. I believe for a buck and a yearling. So I'm praying that day in my office. He says, look at your seed. So my bank, they photocopy the checks. And so I said, okay. So I pull this out and here's what it said on my check register, a copy, a photocopy of my check that I had released from my dear. It said, two bucks, four point or bigger, one button buck. How many deer is that? Three. What I meant to say was, I'm believing God for two bucks, one four-pointer bigger, and one button buck, a yearling. But what did it say? Two bucks, four-pointer bigger. The first one was an eight-point. The second one was identical. And I screamed out loud. Drenda heard me. I started running around the house. I said, wait a minute. That deer was supposed to be there. The law of the kingdom of God brought that. that he was supposed to be there. Lucky for him, I messed up because he'd been dead. But he was supposed to be there. And I went out the next week, got my button buck. Now that changed my life. I, whoa, wait a minute, God. You mean to tell me the kingdom is that specific? He said, yes, sir. Jesus killed a fig tree with words. He raised Lazarus with words. I said, oh, Jesus. A couple years ago, uh, my son, Tom, I'd gotten out, got my deer right away. Just like clockwork, we, our big kitchen window faces the woods. And so my 12 year old, he's not 12, he was like 15 or so then. He hadn't gotten his buck. He hadn't gone out hunting yet. And we looked out in the field, a big 12 point, walked across our backyard and bedded down back in the field. I said, hey, Tom, I, said, I already got my deer. I had, now listen, I had sowed my seed. I had, I had believed God for three deer. I already got two. And the last one I had believed for on my, when I released my faith was a yearling. But Tim got two deer. I had, our freezer was full, so I wasn't going to go out after the third deer. We were done. I was done. But Tom hadn't gotten a deer. He hadn't been out hunting. I said, hey, Tom, there's a 12-point bedded down right there, in our, right there in our field. Let's go get him. Now, Tom hadn't prayed. He hadn't sown seed for a deer. So we went out. I told Tim, go around that way. I was going to go around this way. We're going to try to drive this 12-point to Tom, my 15-year-old, my whatever, 14, 15-year-old. So we go up on the hill. I grabbed, I had my 20 gauge double bear with me, just to have a, just carrying something with me. Had no intention of getting a deer. So I'm up on top of this hill. Tom says, oh, there it went. I heard it, he, there it goes, dad. It's, it went across the airfield. It's gone. And about that time I looked in front of me and there is a yearling deer standing there. Probably about 50 to 60 yards in front of me, just staring at me. I thought, that is weird. That deer is just staring. I'm yelling. I mean, they're all yelling. We're all yelling back and forth. And the deer is just standing there looking right at me. I said, there's a deer up here just staring at me. So I began to walk towards it. It didn't move. I walked towards it. didn't move. I walked towards it. didn't move. It got close enough. got closer. I got close enough. I got here to that wall. I got seven yards from it. And it stood just, it didn't, it didn't move the entire time. It's just standing right there. I said, that is weird. Too bad for you. I took him home. I couldn't resist that one, I'm sure. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I was, I was dragging out that yearling. And I said, man, Lord, I said, I don't understand that. I said, I went out there to help Tom get his. And he goes, wait a minute. He said, Tom had not released law, spiritual law. He said, you released faith for a yearling. The law of the kingdom held that thing in place. I said, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? I'm trying to get you to understand this thing is law, man. The kingdom works every single time. Today, from Fixing the Money Thing, just in time for holiday gift giving, a two-part offer of resources sure to increase your faith through kingdom principles and help you fix your money thing. For many years, Gary's love for hunting earned him nothing but frustration and disappointment until he discovered the principles of faith that changed his life forever. The Lord said, why don't you trust me for your deer this year? You'll enjoy Gary's hunting stories and the principles of faith he's learned that have given him 100% success in the hunt since applying these truths from God's Word. I don't hunt for deer. I receive them. For the hunter and non-hunter alike, Faith Hunt reveals the principles of faith you need to apply. I always say that one experience with the kingdom of God 
will change your life forever. With your $19 gift, along with the Faith Hunt book, you'll also receive a Faith Works Every Time magnet. When you follow God's kingdom laws, faith works every time. Call, write, or go to GaryCasey.com to order. The second part of today's offer is Gary Cassie's most powerful faith teaching to date. For $39 or more, you'll get the book, The Magnet, and Fixing Your Faith, a powerful series of teachings designed to help you get the answers you need. The Bible works just like it says it will. Why won't it work for me? What is disappointed faith? Do I have it? What tricks can get me off course? Do I know how to fight back? Seven CDs on faith that will change your future. Messages include, What are you doing out here? The importance of faith. Get the picture. What do you believe? Take the 30-day challenge. Freaked out. Faded. Call 888-391-LIFE. Write or log on to GaryCasey.com. These great resources are yours when you support Faith Life Ministries. $19 for Faith Hunt and the Faith Works Every Time Magnet. And add the Fixing Your Faith series for only $39 or more today. Call 888-391-LIFE. That's 888-391-5433. Go to GaryCasey.com or write to Faith Life Now. P.O. Box 779, New Albany, Ohio, 43054. Gary Cassie is America's financial coach, and his resources can help make fixing your money thing easy. Call, write, or log on today. The principles we're sharing today are not just about deer hunting. They really changed our finances because they changed our perspective of God and His kingdom and how He cares about the very specific things in your life and my life. Yes, and this material is yours today. If you'll ask for it, you need to get it as we've been talking about. These stories are amazing. The neat thing is you can apply the principle of the story to your own life and have the same results. I always say, Drenda, everyone's writing their own faith hunt book. It may not be about deer, mm -hmm. but there's something you need and something you're hunting for through God's kingdom. It'll be provided if you'll figure out how the kingdom operates. Go to GaryCasey.com, call the number on your screen, get the material, get the book. Fixing your faith, how does faith come, why you need faith, how to know if you're in faith, and then, of course, the little reminder that faith works every time. See you next time here on Fixing the Money Thing. Fixing the Money Thing is brought to you by the Ford Financial Group and Lindsay Honda and Acura of Columbus. Tune in each Friday at 5.30 p.m. for Drenda. Connect with special guests, discover life-changing topics, and learn to live life out loud. It's more than just television. It's Drenda. Come experience Faith Life Church for yourself and become part of a close-knit gathering of people who want something more, more impact, more purpose, more of God, more of life. Located on the east side of Columbus, just 10 minutes from Easton off of 161, Faith Life Church meets in the Now Center with services Saturdays at 6 p.m. and Sundays at 9.30 and 11.30 a.m. Come experience the good life at Faith Life Church. Fixing the Money Thing is a presentation of Faith Life Now.